back in the 60s, a lot of us who were involved in the civil rights movement uh, kind of got uh, influenced by the uh, Freedom Schools movement. Uh, people like Ella Baker, people like uh, Bob Moses uh, uh, had created this, uh, helped create this movement to do democratic education uh, for mainly for young people and adults uh, to uh, as as a way of resisting segregation and uh, segregated schools and uh, and to combat the kind of repression that was going on back then. For example, uh, the citizenship citizenship schools uh, help people prepare uh, to register to vote. Back then, you couldn't register to vote unless you could pass a literacy test, uh, specially designed to keep African American people from voting. So anyway, that that school uh, having a schools movement, kind of an alternative schools movement that was also uh, a, a weapon for social change, uh, drove us to uh, in later days to do uh, kind of to think about progressive education, democratic education, and the ways that schools. Uh, could be a vehicle for transforming society. And that's where people like, uh, you know, we got, we got uh, influenced by people like Paulo Freire, uh, by Jonathan Kozal, by uh, Debbie, Deborah Meyer, uh, and uh, ultimately that led to the small schools movement uh, here in Chicago and New York and other cities. Uh, we used to take 200 uh, teachers from Chicago every year to New York City to go visit Central Park East, which was Deborah Meyer's uh, school, a campus of uh, small schools, elementary and then later high schools. And uh, our teachers would go there and spend some days uh, watching what was going on and come back here and debrief. And we would ask them, you know, what did you see? What did you think? And a lot of them uh, said, oh, well, we could never do that we could never do that kind of stuff here in Chicago. And I'd say, why not? And they'd say, uh, well, uh, the students there call their teachers by their first name. Uh, my teacher's Bob or whatever. And they say, we, we can't allow that here. But I'd say, okay, forget about that for a minute. What did you like? And they said, well, we liked the, uh, the fact that the schools were safe, where uh, the kids were engaged, uh, they were, uh, they were actively engaged in their own learning, and uh, uh, there was a lot of creativity and things like that. So we'd say, well, why don't we try doing that here? And then uh, ultimately that led to the building of the uh, small schools movement here in Chicago, which spread like wildfire, really. And then uh, we kind of connected with uh, Debbie and those people, and uh, small schools actually became kind of the flavor of the month for a while, for more than a month. Uh, and of course, the uh, the ending wasn't too happy. Uh, the, the schools kind of got taken over by the charter school movement and and uh, privatization. And uh, so my wife Susan and I wrote a book about that called "Small Schools: uh, uh, School Reform Meets the Ownership Society." Uh, and uh, anyway, through that experience. Uh, I began. Uh, I became very much influenced by uh, uh, democratic educators and began uh, trying to understand uh, how schools could be a vehicle for social change. And uh, uh, to do that, I went back to the old to the '30s, really, and the uh, struggle within the Progressive Education Association with people like John Dewey, uh, George Counts, who wrote a piece called. Uh, there the schools changed the social order and that created a huge debate. You know, in other words, whether schools should just be about, uh, progressive schools should just be about the development of the child, kind of like a, as a flower being watered by educators, or whether schools should be a, a vehicle, a tool, uh, uh, a road to changing the whole society. And uh, uh, Dewey wrote a book called uh, uh, called uh, the schools and society, I believe it, it was, uh, ed, uh, experience in education and things like that. So that's that's really where my 
background comes from, but I should mention one other uh, influencer, and that would be my brother Fred. My brother Fred is a career teacher. He's now retired. He was also a, a local union president, and uh, he impressed upon me the, uh, the idea that uh, uh, school change has got to begin with, uh, uh, with teachers, with educators themselves. And uh, he was very critical of some of the school reformers who never taught, and, uh, but had big ideas about school change uh, that were uh, totally separate and in, in contradiction with the experiences of teachers and students and people closest to, uh, you might say, the point of production or the, the point of education. Uh, so my, I tip my hat every day to my brother Fred who I now have a radio show with uh, uh, called Hitting Left. And uh, together we, we interview uh, education people and uh, uh, teachers and students to try to solve the problem uh, of social change and schooling and you know, where the confluence of those two things come into play.